Wait, there's something very weak coming through. A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away. Hello, fellow galactic listeners. I'm Todd Hoffman, and this is WSTR Galactic Public Access, a Star Wars podcast. Welcome to episode 122. Today, we'll be reviewing the book Queen's Shadow by E.K. Johnston. Joining me today, as always, Miss Heather Allred. It's me. Hi, everybody. Hello. Um, not joining us as always, <sighs> Mr. Aaron Julian. He is scholasticing. He's it's finals doing, week. It's the final countdown. It's the final um, it, he needs to finish strong, so we're letting him. You know. Podcasting, we think is important, you know, but his school is very, very important. So we wish you the best of luck, my friend, and um, make sure you, uh, you know, pass all your stuff and, you know, all that stuff, you know. So, but yeah, we'll see. He he will be back. We'll be we'll be full strength very soon. But he's got it. He's got to do his thing. So totally. Um, we wish you the best, Mister Aaron Julian. Uh, we're probably just gonna have to have like um, a whole podcast about. Uh, his like role playing game. We'll just like <laughs> we'll just take Katina chat and just like just like hey Aaron, you got the whole show because we we need like the, all the mission updates. So, but yeah, he will be back shortly with us. Don't don't you worry. But tonight it's uh, Heather and I. So don't, don't you don't you worry. You're in good hands. That's right. Uh, you you could check us out on the social media. That's WSTR Media, all one word, all lowercase. Email us at mailbox at WSTRmedia.com. Leave us a voicemail at 630-557-WSTR. That's 630-557-9787. You can leave us a voicemail. uh, And then you can catch our back catalog of episodes at podcast.wstr.com. That's where you can find us. Uh, We're also on YouTube. Just search WSTR Media. You can find us there. Uh, today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. You can go and get a free Audible book download and a 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com forward slash WSDR. They have like 400,000 titles and it keeps on growing. You can choose from your iPhone, Android, Kindle, MP3 player, your any listening device of your choice. Yep. And yeah. We are offering a free uh, 30 day trial. You get to keep the book for free. Even after the 30 days, you're like, what? Ah, this isn't for me. Get to keep it. You can share it with your friends, whatever you want. So uh, go over to audibletrial.com forward slash WSTR and you can get a free Audible book or audio book. But I like Audible, but you can go, you know, Audible book, Audible, Audible book. It's kind of the same thing. Um, we got merch. Store that store dot dot com. Um, yeah, we got t shirts, tanks, True. socks, yes, leggings, yes, s- h- hoodies, stickers. stickers, anything you want. You can go there, store dot com. Uh, all different colors, all different sizes, kids, ladies, men's. It's true, it's all there. You get there, Heather, yes. Tease that news. <gasps> Teasing. All right. I have crying. Mm. Okay. You came in that thing? Uh-huh. Did someone say tacos? We love tacos. And then squad goals. Uh-huh. Always in motion. The future is. Mm, very interesting. There you go. That That is amazing. All right. Well, I guess we'll just have to wait for the news to find out more. That's that's the tease. That's the tease. We got a lot to cover. (laughs) Yeah, we do. 
Um, that was like, I think five things. So I'm not really sure, but we'll, we'll, we'll get through it. We'll get through it. All right. Twitter trash compactor. Get in there, you big boy. I don't care what you smell. Every week we run a poll on the old Twitter. Uh, this week, two polls. Cause we're cool like that. Too cool. All right. So the first one, um, obviously last week, we had the passing of Peter Mayhew. So uh, we started off with what is your favorite? The Wookiee Roars moment, Mr. P- Peter Wayhu, uh, Mayhew. Uh, right ends welcome. Okay, so we have four choices. Laugh it up fuzzball. Yelling at the mouse droid. Ray takes Han's seat and protecting the princess. Heather, out of those four choices, what would you choose? Mm. Well, officially, I wrote in my my oh. answer. Um, I just love him. I love Wookie when he's yeah. being attended to. Um, in the Force I Awakens, know. I just I just think it's adorable that this like nine foot Wookie needs yeah. to be reaffirmed that he was brave, even though he could oh, rip your right. arms off. Right. Um, but of the four choices, I would pick laugh it up fuzzball. Okay. That's good. That's good. Uh, I, I don't think, honestly, I honestly, when I did this, I don't think we either talked about that last week. So just came to me and protecting the princess. We didn't talk about that we in didn't. empire where he throwing stormtroopers and C3PO's panicking that he's going to fall off and, we going to talk about those two, but uh, I love laughing up fuzzball as well. Um, I, of course, picked yelling at the mouse droid. That was my favorite moment. Yep. I had to vote for it. I would be a hypocrite if I did not vote for it's that. True. So vote for it. But Twitter prevailed and said, laugh it up fuzzball, which is, you know, it's kind of awkward You know, when you know Princess Leia and Luke are brothers and or brother and sister and, you know, but. The scene is good. It's <laughs> funny. Han's not very happy, and but Chewie <laughs> sure has to laugh. So there you go. All right, second poll. Ooh. What is your favorite Avengers movie? Obviously, last week we also talked about we reviewed Avengers Endgame. Um, okay, so we just looked at the four Avengers movies. So if you're not familiar, it's The Avengers, which is the first one. Age of Ultron, Infinity War, and then Endgame. So this poll's probably not the best like right now because you just came off of Endgame. So it probably is a little biased, but I had to throw it out there anyways. Um, Age of Ultron got no love, but uh, Endgame came up on top. Uh, I, I Yeah, I, I mean, I... After you saw it twice, right, Heather? I've seen it twice, yes. Okay, and on your second viewing, how did it did it change your your mind, or did you enjoy it more, or where were you at with that? Yeah, so um, I think last week I may have mentioned in the um, recording review of the movie that you know it wasn't my favorite. Um, right. I still really prefer the original, um, the first one, Numero Uno. Um, which is what I did vote for in the Twitter. Um, oh, okay. Um, but I think having seen it a second time, um, much like most movies, when you watch it a second time, you watch it with such different eyes because you're now like putting right. other pieces together and things like that. Um, mm-hmm. I went with a different crew of people this time. So um, obviously your experience shifts based on who you're with and the audience and things like that. So it's true. It's um, true. It, it's a good flick, man. Um, it is. I, I think um, what I did find is that my opinions didn't really change. The things that I loved or the things that I loved and the things that I didn't like or didn't care for. I'm like, eh. Um, yeah. I didn't. Thor didn't bother me as much this time, though, as okay. the first time. Okay. That might be the one thing that changed. Okay. That's fair. That's fair. But you liked it still. 
Oh, yeah. I mean, it'll be yeah. added to my collection. I'll still watch it. Um, but I think if there was one Avengers I had to watch repeatedly, I don't know if yes. that would be the one I'd watch. Ooh, okay. I think if I'm watching one repeatedly, I would have to go with the first one. Totally. Because it's like it's you it's just like getting getting it together. I I mean, I feel like Infinity War is nonstop. Like from the time that the you know, time you sit in your seat or now you're at home and you know, get it going, it just doesn't stop till you know it ends. And it when it ends, it's like oof. You know, it's like, wow. Yeah. I, to me, I feel like Infinity War is top to bottom, like just an onslaught and mm-hmm. it doesn't stop. It doesn't let up. And I just think too, with Endgame, uh, it doesn't have that same emotional impact, but I feel like it does still do a pretty decent job for mm-hmm. kind of the finale. So there you go. Um, Endgame one. Obviously, but I will say though, um, Age of Ultron got zero love on yeah. the Twitter. But yeah. one of my favorite kind of Avenger relaxed moments is Thor's hammer. Yeah, when they're all trying to lift it in Age yes. of Ultron. So yes, if I can give it a little bit of love because yeah. I do no, love that moment for sure. That's a great and I um, gosh, who's the villain? Who's the guy? Uh, not Ultron, but the guy that plays him. Um, Ugh, I, now that you've asked me, I'm like, I don't know. Uh, All I well, have is anyway, Josh Brolin in James, my head, and that's not it. No, 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 no. It's James. It's James okay. Spader. Thank you. And that's why See? I'm here. Teamwork. <laughs> just like the Avengers. We're teaming up. That was a big power move there. Um, yeah, I just love I love his voice. I love how he played Ultron. Uh, I think that's good. Um, and there's um there are some good moments there, but yeah, the par- party scene is awesome. But it got no love, but that's okay. We still we love all the vendors. We we love them all there. So, um, all right. How about we go to our main topic? That's why everybody's here. <laughs> that's right. And now for our feature presentation. <laughs> all right. So, um, we are talking about. A book called Queen's Shadow. It's by E.K. Johnston. Um, cover artist Tara Phillips, which I love this cover. On it point. is on point. Uh, this was released on March 5th, 2019. Uh, the paperback came out May 2nd. We're just going, yeah, we're, we wa- we read the paperback. No, we are just waiting for Heather to finish the book. Um, so... <laughs> <laughs> that happened uh, today, right, Heather? <laughs> I finished today. <laughs> Yay. Okay. I feel like I want to preface. Okay. I'm kind of a Start. slow reader. Okay. So it took me a while, but I did it. You did it. Okay. You did. I, with probably some cattle prodding for me, I was just like, listen. <laughs> This kept on pushing. This kept on pushing in the in the old schedule, and uh, I'd get these little yeah. Facebook messages. It'd be like Queen's Shadow question mark. Where are you exactly in Queen <laughs> Shadow? You know, I'm, I'm working on it, Todd. I'm working on it. Oh my gosh, I'm. I didn't mean to be so mean. No, but. <laughs> it was really funny. <laughs> Just like can. Are you going to finish this or, you know, are we, what are we, what are we doing here? All right. So let's just this. So chronologically, yes, this book falls 28 BBY. So what's BBY again? Before the Battle of Yavin. So it happens, you know, roughly her transitioning from queen to senator. Uh, there's also an epilogue that runs roughly around 19 years before Yavin. So this kind of chronologically, again, prequel error. If you, you know, roughly that's kind of where we're at. Um, E.K. Johnson said the following. It's the story of Padme changing from a queen to senator and the person right behind her and all other handmaids, uh, hand, hand maidens, excuse me, behind Padme. So here is, we're going to read, first we're going to read 
the publisher summary, and Perfect. then we're going to dive dive deep into the book. So here we go. The end of her reign is just beginning. When Padme Amidala steps down from her position as Queen of Naboo, she's ready to set aside her title and return to life out of the spotlight. But to her surprise, the new queen asks Padme to continue surveying their people, this time in the Galactic Senate. Padme is unsure about the new role, but cannot turn down the request, especially since... Thanks to her dearest friend and decoy, Sabe, she can be in two places at once. While Padme plunges into politics, Sabe is set off on a mission dear Padme's heart. On the glistening capital planet of Coruscant, Padme knew Senate cal- uh, colleagues re- regarding her with curiosity and with suspicion for her role in ousting the previous chancellor. Posting, uh, posing as a merchant on Tatooine, Sabe has a fewer has fewer resources than she thought, and a few and fewer options than she needs. Together with Padme, loyal handmaidens Padme and Sabe must navigate treacherous politics, adapt to constantly changing landscapes, and forge a new identity beyond the Queen's shadow. Dun dun dun. So there you have it. So that's the that's the actual publisher summary of the book. Mm-hmm. So if you haven't read the book, put this on pause. Go read the book. Or you can go to www.audibletrial.com for SDR and get your three day 30 day free trial. And <laughs> it's right there. Um so Heather. Yes. Let's just talk. Let's uh we'll kind of do the same thing. Like yeah. overall. What did you think of the book? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Where you at? Yeah. So um, overall, I really liked it. Okay. Um, I will say, I think what happened was, is I was really into it at the beginning and just the okay. introduction and this um, really wonderful kind of like, hey, we're all just waiting to find out who the new queen is mm-hmm. kind of scene and all of her handmaidens with her. And it's this really pretty picture that was painted. Yeah. And, yes. and then things kind of shifted and then it hit this small window of the book that didn't catch my attention as much, which is pr- mm-hmm. probably led to some of the, the slower reading. <laughs> yeah. Um, the- but then near the end, it picks up. It picks up quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the epilogue is kind of spectacular. <laughs> yeah. The epilogue is pretty amazing. <laughs> so I, I feel agree. like it, it bookends really well. Um, and so um, yeah. I highly recommend it. Um, I know there's okay. been a couple not so great reviews out there on the internet. Um, I think because of some of that, that slow part. But yeah. But yeah. You know. Yeah. Sometimes that happens. <laughs> so, so, sometimes it happens. Yeah. I mean, I think I, I'm kind of going with you as well. I really like how she set the scene and kind of really established all the um, relationships. But it also, um, because I, I did this through Audible, mm-hmm. um, it was kind of hard. I felt in a sense, to follow which handmaiden was who. Obviously, Sabe and Padme, obviously you get those. But, like, everyone else was kind of interchangeable in a sense. Mm -hmm. And I lost that a little bit. But I really like how she set the stage. And I did feel it it did get pretty intriguing. Um, Even in Coruscant, there were some really great parts. And I really liked... I really like the interaction between the handmaidens and you got to understand a little bit more than what you saw in Phantom Menace in a sense, Mm -hmm. you know, Yeah. Uh, which is again with a book, that's kind of what you want, you know? So I thought that was good. And like you said, I felt like the, it built to the end. um, And that epilogue is like on point. So uh, why don't we just kind of start right at the beginning? Um, So they're on Naboo and, Really, they are reelect. They're electing a new queen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Ek paints, like I said earlier, paints this really beautiful picture of um, Padme at 
what I envisioned, like her vacation home or like <laughs> yeah, yeah, this like place of relaxation, and you know the handmaidens are playing in the pool and or the ocean or whatever, and you know, yeah. um, for any of you out there who know anything about like um, uh, royalty um, in England historically speaking you know there's ladies in waiting and there's all of these things mm. that surround a princess or what have you and it felt very much like that and mm -hmm. um and they all had kind of their different personalities and they all specialized in certain things um but one of my favorite parts about it was even in this um quote-unquote relaxed part of them as a group you know just mm -hmm. simply waiting on news um E.K. writes this relationship between Padme and Sabe, where you yeah. know that their relationship is just slightly different. It's, mm -hmm. you know, um, it's almost as though Sabe knows that she can't fully be off of her guard at any given time, mm -hmm. um, which I thought was a really great character development. Yeah. At the beginning, yeah, I mean before it even moved in. Right, exactly. And the cool thing is basically that they take on the name of the queen. So yeah. that's why it's like Corday, Sabe, Maybe. yeah, um, it, you know, Padme. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah. Now that makes sense because I was, you know, to me, like when you're listening it. Uh, you know, when you're watching the movie, you're like, oh, that's kind of cheesy. They all have the same name. But it it's part of the process. So these handmaidens kind of go through like a book boot camp mm -hmm. and they get in, you know, it, it talks about that, that with Panaka, which was kind of cool. Like he's training them and they they're tough. You know, they're not just these decoys. I mean, there's one one that's always supposed to look like more like the queen in a sense. Yep. Um, but they all have different skills. They all have different attributes and they contribute and make a team. Yep. Um, and I think that was really cool in developing. Well, that makes sense now that they all have similar names because it's part of the Naboo culture. Like they take on the name. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that's interesting too, is as, as her reign is ending, they all still decide that they're taking, they're keeping their name. They're not yeah. changing as they're looking at different careers. Right. And that just, I mean, I think that brings up a great point of speaking to, it's not just a job for them. You know, um, this I'm jumping. So please forgive me. Oh no. Near the end of the book, this is brought up where they weren't serving Naboo. They weren't serving you know, their country, they were serving her. Um, mm. You know, they were more than friends. They were more than sisters. It was, it's a different kind of bond that, I mean, they're literally changing their identity and who they are mm. Okay, out of service yeah. to her. So, yes. yeah, yeah. And they, right. And they don't, they feel it as an honor that they're doing that for Padme. Correct. You know? So, I, we know this new queen. Um, and so she right away, the new queen is saying, don't go on vacation here, mm -hmm. girlfriend. <laughs> I feel like you still have a lot to offer for Naboo. And that's where um, she is asked to be the senator. So not too much of a reprieve um, in her duties. Um, and so she immediately uh, you know, tells the parents, hey, I'm not going to be coming home. You know, <laughs> they basically they have a Skype call, you know, hey, I'm not coming back home. Going to go to Coruscant. And uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's very interesting, too, I think, um, how, uh, again, Padme's wardrobe is on point. It's on point. And um it's very interesting how they are also picking what needs to be. They have to change it up to be more official and senator and not so more uh, ornate, you know. So I think that's important. Uh, and EK kind of, I feel, really paints the picture of what, what it means to be 
uh, you know, the wardrobe is a whole, it's almost like it's other character, yes. you know, with Padme. So. Oh my goodness. So what did you think of that? Yeah. Um, I mean, you know me, I'm all about a good <laughs> wardrobe. No, um, it's, I loved it. I loved that, you know, she's basically like, sorry, mom, sorry, dad, you know, and then her handmaidens basically are given opportunities to go other places and right. yeah. they stay with her. And um, yeah, there's a great scene. Again, I don't know where in the book, but right. Um, <laughs> that this one, you know, dress that she's wearing. I mean, it's like bulletproof, like what kind of oh, fabric right. is that? You know? And like, I don't <laughs> right, think it's yeah. Kevlar people like, right. right yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And you know, this idea that, how they styled Padme to be Queen Amidala, there was a lot of reasoning behind these elaborate headpieces and other things because it distracted from who was actually wearing it for the sake. Yes. You know? Yeah. And so now that they're shifting away from that a bit, some of that queen look has to alter a little bit too because now she's a senator and it changes. But then what happens when they do have to be the same, like... Is it as formal? Is it right? So it's it's a whole education, and I don't know. Right. So some of her entourage splits off. Like one went into agriculture and stays there. Right. Right. But, right. Right. And then um, one was a singer, I think. Oh right? yeah. Uh, no. Let's see the artist. Yes. No painter. Artist. I don't. I don't know. Yeah, maybe a painter. I think there was painting involved somewhere. But so, but Sabe and um, Corday go with her Mm -hmm. to. um, So now they're now they're in Coruscant, and everyone, you know, it's a new senator kind of introduction, and she's just trying to feel things out, and people are skeptical of her because, just like the publisher summary said, you know, she kind of took down the last chancellor, so. People don't know how to take her or mm-hmm. actually take her professionally. So right. I thought that was interesting, too, how she begins trying to really kind of establish herself and not just – she's not just for Naboo. She's for the Senate, which is also – they. I feel EK does a really good job of getting into Padme, Padme's, like, mindset yeah. and talking kind of through that, like – how I want to be different or how I want to be perceived Mm -hmm. um, is very important to her as she becomes a Senator. Uh, uh, Of course, like almost immediately, like somebody wants to kill her, you know, it it just happens. So. (laughs) Yeah. Well, but it's interesting, Todd, you know, she's super young as queen. I mean, it's, it's basically thinking like, I don't know, like a junior in college, not junior, like a junior in high school, like going to Washington DC and being on the Senate. Like it's, Oh, right. You know, it's a little crazy. And I think like, I, I am totally with you. This EK does a great job of just this idea of like entering a world where everyone else that's been a part of it has only seen her in this one element and yeah. So they kind of have like well, these preconceived notions, right? I mean, technically speaking, Padme's fourteen in Phantom Menace. I'm just saying. Yeah. So she that you know at Attack of Clones, which is again ten years after uh, Phantom Menace, True. she's 24. You know, Anakin's 19, she's 24. That's kind of the age. So. Right. When she's stepping into this political arena, she is still. She's like what, fif- maybe maybe fifteen. Uh, yeah, because you're right. I don't or think maybe a little s- later. Slightly later, maybe. Okay. I, yeah, not not too much because I, I, I feel like she didn't have too much after the Phantom Menace that she was in. You know, right. I don't know. Even still. Say she's 17. It's still, <laughs> still very pretty young. young yeah. Pretty young. So she's getting into her own um, assassination mm-hmm. attempts. Mm-hmm. Uh, her 
droids acting weird and Bail Organa just happens to be there and says, hey, you shouldn't be here yep. and uh, saves her in a sense. And they start a little friendship, which is kind of cool. Mm-hmm. And Bail, Bail kind of tests her, tests her out. I really, there's one scene in particular that I really like is she's at a formal gala and she's trying to determine what the inside scoop is for Mon Mothra and Bale. It's like Mon Mothra's party or something. Mm -hmm. And there's like, it's a party inside. There's like a, uh, a party is really the diversion and there's another thing going on. And so she's trying to sneak around. And so they get the makeup done. They figure out, they, really plan for this like wardrobe change and makeup and they do it on the fly and they practice this. So Padme can kind of sneak around and see what's going on. And she eavesdrops on bail a little bit and uh, tries to get back to the party and bail like catches her. Yep. And it was kind of like a little weak (laughs) and a nod and, he kind of knew. He kind of knew the gig, and yeah. um, I thought that was a really well thought out scene as far as how Ek kind of painted that. So, what did you think about that one? Yeah, um, it was really fun to kind of, you know, at this point, you know, she's you know made connections in the Senate, you know, having met right. these people. She gets this invitation to the shindig with Mon Matha. You know, hearing from other people like, oh, it could be a trap or, oh, you're the distraction because you're the joke of the Senate. Or, I mean, that's being dramatic, obviously. Right. But um, but then her and her team, her and her handmaidens, they are like, well, then, then let's use it. You know, yeah. and yeah, they do the the quick wardrobe switch on the fly. Switcheroo, switcheroo. Yeah. yeah. And so I think um, it's a fun nod, um, you know, to... Padme and Qui-Gon Jinn and like mm. that moment in the movie where, you know, she steps out and Qui-Gon's yeah. like, yep, knew that. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, no. And Obi-Wan's like, what? what? And Qui- Qui-Gon knew that the minute, the minute it happened, he, he, he knew way before then, you know, <laughs> Liam Neeson's he knew on like, Tatooine. I knew yeah, that. He, yeah. Um, he knew on Tatooine, you know, I was like, <laughs> Um, Don't be pulling anything, but Obi Wan's like what? Um, but I do. I think it's a it's a great choice for Ek because I think what she yeah. was able to do in that scene is um, show the power of the handmaidens and that team around her and what they can accomplish, but right. then also um, show the vulnerability that can come from that as well when you start having really trusted people outside of your core group. That's true. So that's it's a true. nice kind yeah. of counterbalance. That's that's good. Yeah. Um, she meets um, a boy that's kind of annoying too. That was that's a little fun. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's fun, like you know the introduction of R two. Of course, I went for the droid people. Of of course. Um, yeah. just because it's a again, it's kind of like Bail Organa. Just these great people that you know through the story that. You know, you just you're introduced to them through it, like how the people got connected or whatever. And so it's just fun to. Well, and and it's basically saying that R2 stayed with her on Naboo. Like, yeah, he he didn't go, you know, he didn't go back with the Jedi or anything. He stayed with with uh, Amidala. So that's that's nice. Yeah. Um, yeah. It Well, so, so the other thing that. The kind of sub there's a subplot in the sense of she needs to kind of find a committee she needs to mm. anchor to. And that was a big thing. One of the things she really wanted to do, and what the Sabe Sabe side story is she wants to uh, f- like free slavery, abolish slavery. And there's a committee for that. And uh, he, we get a good run in with uh. Palpatine, and he's like, "No, you're not gonna get on that one." So Palpatine guy, I don't, ah, I don't trust him too well. Right, exactly. And um, there's another senator that kind of befriends her early, and she thinks she's a good person. I forget now. Again, I forget her name. Um, 
Gosh, it's escaping me. But she she's one of the senators that's close to Palpatine, and so she kind of trusts her. But then she ends up not doing her committee, but going with Bale and some. What is it like? Like a refugee, you know, refugee aid with some like ship load lifter things. Something, I'm not really yeah. something. It's it's. It really is something that she's passionate about, and then she's working with uh, the boy, the the boy senator that likes her, but he makes a move on her. But they stay up all night to basically make the speech, and she wins the Senate over. Mm-hmm. But he also makes a move on her, and she's like, "No, dude, like, no, no not not today." Not ever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Not ever. But he's, yeah, he's associated with the banking clan. So there's a little tie in to some of that. And you could kind of see, she really kind of, from a political perspective, kind of shows. There's this whole other thing and all the, as we know in politics, it's not what's done at the Senate. It's really at these parties. And so she goes to a lot of parties. Sabe Mm -hmm. goes to Tatooine to try to um, not only rescue Anakin's mother, but really trying to find out and stop slavery. And it really kind of backfires on her. It doesn't go the way she thought. One of... um, uh, Padme's entourage, uh, another guard goes with her. And so you get to see the guards, not only the handmaidens, but the guards, the whole kind of inner circle of uh, Padme Amidala is very powerful. They have all different, you know, abilities or, you know, right. uh, to, to help her out. And so that that's really kind of cool. Uh, yeah, and then, you know, this is where I think you know, you get kind of lost in this is a slow part in a sense. Like uh, there's this committees and mm-hmm. there's a lot of and, and really what you get to find out is like uh, Palpatine's still kind of blocking her, you know, mm-hmm. and one of the and he doesn't get surprised often. And one of the things is that she she has a little like vacation. And before she goes home to Naboo from uh she goes and visits at Bale and yeah. Alderaan. And that's super fun. That's a su- super fun thing, but uh, Palpatine does not like it. Yeah, and that was super interesting, yeah, to kind of um, start to see this other... I mean, we I think we all know, but I just did air quotes for those people who didn't see that. Um, <laughs> air quotes, no. Um, you know, for so long, Palpatine has really moved the head and the finger and the pulse of of Padme. And here she yeah. is sort of coming into her own and Palpatine's like, uh, that's screwing up my plan. Uh. Right. <laughs> right. And I think he kind of already knows that Bale, that he's trying to feel out Bale as well, mm-hmm. you know, as far as who's on his side, who's not. Um, so, you know, they have a great little interaction there. Um, there is some Leia there as well, right? I feel like there was some connect. I th- feel like she was there, right? I can't remember. Leia? Yeah. At Alderaan or no? I forget who was at that dinner. I thought she was there. I mean, it I was know. Bale and Brea. Yeah. Yeah. Like Leia, as in Padme's daughter, Leia. Oh, that's right. She wasn't even born. Never mind. Okay, I'm like sorry. I am so confused by you right now. She, she, she was, she was Force Ghost in the future, right? In the yeah. past, yeah. It's yeah. the it special little... edition book. You can pick it up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, right, right. You can't put her back in. Yeah, I was like, oh, I forgot. She's not even born. You're probably thinking of the Princess Leia book. Yeah. When they do the but dinners. no, it was I I yeah, exactly. But cuz that was, you know, the Princess Leia book was really cool seeing the Alderaan culture and so Yeah. when you know, EK comes back, it's kind of like feels familiar. So if you read that book, yeah. it's really cool to see, you know, and actually they talk about Brea being injured, like she has oh, yeah. she has this injury, which is kind of interesting, um but she's still 
uh, you know, there's some, you know, um, similarities between what the Nabu court is versus the Alderinian court, you know? And so there's some bond, bonding there, which is kind of like a little foreshadowing to Leia. I'm sorry. I don't know what I was thinking then, but, um, you know, that there was a bond between Brea and Padme. So I don't know where that came yeah, from. Totally. I apologize. Um, so they have a great little kind of little vacation. Um, and at all this time, like Sabe too is doing some stuff in Coruscant, kind of going lower levels, trying to get some mm-hmm. dirt, trying to get some information. Cause there's also another little kind of subplot is there. They're trying to paint Padme as like a fool. Right. And so there's a lot of like news stuff about her and all this kind of stuff. And so Sabe is kind of doing that. And so there's a lot of other kind of political intrigue going on. Yeah. And I think that's an interesting thing. And maybe, you know, in the pieces of it made it, you know, more difficult in my reading of it. Cause at some point yeah. I'm like, I don't care about politics. <laughs> um, but right. it is, it's, it's interesting. I mean, you know, you look at, a presidential race, yeah, you've got this front person, but they have a whole team doing they all the right. other stuff and like yes. yeah. squashing the rumors and putting other news alerts out there. And this is what her handmaidens are doing. They're, you know, specifically yeah. Sabe and everything. So yeah. um it's, you know, I know we joke about, you know, CNN in space, you know, in the films it, and yes, stuff, but it's, yes, but yeah. this is the reality of it. And I think it makes yep. the Star Wars universe universe a bit more like relatable. Right. Yeah. It it, it uh, flushes it out a little bit more. It flushes it out a lot. Sure. Uh okay, so that all happens. They, you know, um ba- uh, Padme and Bale and Mon Mothra are they're trusted together. They kind of say something's up. They need to, it's not, they don't really call it the rebellion, but they understand like they really want to fight for the Republic and not what's going on with all these different parties involved. So that is very interesting. It's kind of the slow foundations of, you see the rebellion happening. Uh, Why don't we get right to the end? Um, That epilogue, man. Yeah, so it's interesting, like, so, like, literally the page before the epilogue, you know, you've got Padme in her room and an alarm sounds because there's a ship too close to the window or door or whatever, and it's Sabe, and it's, you know, this whole idea, and it's, um, there's this really beautiful written page, so... Congrats to typesetting. I work at a publisher, so I know these <laughs> stupid things in my brain. Right. right. Um, You're like, I love the facts. Yeah. It was good facts. Um, the yeah, way yeah. that she did it, it's this beautiful interchange between Padme and Sabe where there's that um, nonverbal communication that they're doing hmm. where you can, yeah. they know, they sense the worry or the the whatever mm. between the two of them and in this yeah. like italics, which you know is sort of a non spoken, understood reference, mm. you know. It kind of goes back to the beginning of the book where, you know, it's this reassurance saying we're brave, your highness. And she, she says it like three or four times. And, Mm. and so then at the very end, it just, you know, Padme's like, all right, what do we do? And then it goes straight to the epilogue and it's this, um, for me, and this is kind of what I was saying, like this front end of this great community of women and this mm-hmm. like handmaiden and they're young, but they're powerful and right. they, they're they really as a as a team kind of unstoppable. And then kind of these two that have this different kind of connection, um, yeah. you know, we're brave, your highness. And it gives Padme just that ounce that she needed to be like, all right, what are we going to do? Right, right. And then the epilogue, and then you're crying. So thank you, E.K. Johnston. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. so I don't know how we want to do it, the epilogue, but. Well, the epilogue is really Padme uh, passed away. 
And, you know, Sabe really kind of continue. She's alive. Mm-hmm. First of all, she's alive, which is a big thing. Um, and she kind of, she's going to c- kind of continue the fight. And uh, again, I'm missing the guard. I forget the guard's name, but they really Tan- kind of. Tandra? 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 Something yes. Like that, there I you think. go. Yeah. He, they they hit it off and they they have a romantic interest as well as. <laughs> they love a, each other. They like each other. And th- he is a kind of the same thing from a Naboo perspective is. He's dedicated to his mission, mm-hmm. uh, but him and Sabe hit it off, you know, and they're alive and they're kind of, she's out there still, mm-hmm. which is something very interesting and super powerful because she is one tough cookie, you know. Yeah. So it, it's pretty awesome. Um, again, I feel, you know, overall with the book is... Uh, it's a story that I didn't think I wanted, but once I read it, I have a deeper pre- appreciation for that whole system and how it works. And I really think a- EK did a really good job of painting that out in the book. Beautifully said. Yeah, I thank you. I agree. I think um, this is the part of the world. Not this one, but these types of parts that the Star Wars fans want. We want that behind the curtain look Mm, at characters or communities or something. I think um, that's something, you know, they're doing with like the Mandalorian TV series. Like they're giving Mm -hmm. us a sneak peek at something that we only briefly got, you know, in a film here or there. Um, And so I agree with you, Todd. I think it's the story we didn't know we needed until we got it. And yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So I, I, I would agree. Like you said that perfectly too. I, if you, if you're interested in Padme and interested in, in the culture, there's a lot to be said in this book and it, and it really is fleshed out really well. Um, it is, again, I, I think there is, not that it's bad writing. I just think it's slow in the middle. It's just a little slow. Um, I, again, I, that intro is so good, and I think the ending's so good. I just so it gets lost. And like I said, um, some of the handmaidens besides Sabe and Corday kind of get lost. You mm-hmm. know, they're not really flushed out a lot. Um, but but it's really good. The only the the other thing Uh-oh. is like from an audio perspective. The, the treat is is that Catherine uh, Tabor, I think you're saying her name right, she did the voice of Padme in The Clone Wars, the, yeah. the cartoon. And she does the voice, she does the narration for this book. And it's it's awesome. Mm-hmm. It is like, it's so good. So uh, the audio is, she does such a great job. Um, and again, the dial, you know, the, the dialect as far as like, that was the other thing they kind of go through is like how flat the reason that Padme is so flat in episode one is because it can be replicated. Correct. There's no accent, which is another little, another like kind of little Easter egg or a little, little bit behind the curtain thing where you're like, Oh, okay. That makes sense. So it's not, it's not her natural. And they talk about in, it kind of in Padme's head, they kind of talk about that. Like, Oh, I'm going to, be normal and this is how I use it. And sometimes I'm more formal in a senator kind of perspective, but it's a little bit different. And they tweak it a little bit as she goes into Senate, which is also kind of fascinating. But yes, I, I think Catherine Tabor does a really good job of narrating in this book. So so I think overall our recommendation is read it. Yes. Um <laughs> but don't take like four months to read it like Heather. <laughs> Just kidding. But Jokes. I finished it, people. I didn't Jokes, give people. up on Jokes. it. Jokes. That's right. That's right. It was really two months. It was two months. It was no big deal. No. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So recommend it. It's good. Uh, um, it, it definitely flushes it out a little bit more for, for, for Padme. So if you're interested in that, definitely go read it. Uh, okay. Shall we go to the... News of the week! And now, 
the Star Wars News of the Week. All right, so I've teased it, and now it's time to learn about it. So we have from abcnews.com, we have Star Wars Land executive producer stating, this is the ride the world has been waiting for. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> so... Um, there were no cameras allowed during the interview. Mm, so there's no photos See, maybe out okay. there. Okay, so this is how secret it is. This is ABC, Good Morning America, at Disney. ABC. <laughs> like, no. Owned by Disney. <laughs> yeah. Is not like, allowed no. to see Disney things. <laughs> yeah. No cameras. No cameras. <laughs> oh, man. So it looks like it states uh, both entrances are cinematic in their scale. Um, so you are probably already going to feel like walking into this epic world just based on that small statement alone um he called the um access to the storytellers and filmmakers at lucasfilm unprecedented it's enabled us to deliver this level of authentic of an authentic experience it was a little harder to read than i thought um that's okay they stated we turned to the corner and came up to the falcon and lost it um mm. <laughs> yeah i mean this is just this is you know um that he walked a woman from Lucasfilm into there, seeing the Millennium Falcon, and she just started crying. Um, even the filmmakers don't see these things built full size. Usually it's a screen or a model or just part of a set um, when they're doing a movie. But for our biggest fans, I think they're going to be blown away by the scale and level of detail. Mm. Um so basically, any piece of merchandise is only available here and is, is authentically in story. There's no Disney Parks merchandise here. It's only items the residents of Batu would purchase. Oh my God. Intriguing. Intriguing. Right. So, right, right. right. Um, let me just give you guys an example. Just, I know I've already wet right. your whistle, but let me just keep going. Um, the toy shop has handmade plush toys. Of course. I mean, come on. Food and beverage is also signature to the land. Um, Ronto Roasters will roast meats. You can carry your sandwich around to the land. There's a quick service at Docking Bay 7. Oh, no. And then basically the best part of the whole place is the Droid Depot, where you can build your own droid. Okay. okay. I'll and follow then you. When you you power it up, it'll interact with other droids in the other parts of the land. Oh, dude. What is happening? Shut up and take my money. <laughs> what is happening here, people? And then, of course, custom lightsabers. So you have a Lucasfilm person crying over the Millennium Falcon and a real life experience. I hope you bring Kleenex <laughs> and wads of cash. <laughs> right, right. Right. Um, yeah, pretty much. Like, Ooh. just bring wads of cash, please. That's all. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I think. But, it, Todd, that's not all, is it? I, that's it? That's all I've got. That's Do it. you have okay. more? Okay. Of course. Oh. Um, Disney Resort announces parking procedures for Galaxy's Edge. Um, yeah. Yeah. If I could get the link to pull up, um, hold on one second. Uh, but oh. basically, the, here's here's one thing we know. Here's one you thing gotta, we know. Gotta get in and out. So you Disney is working on. The they're like you said before, Heather. They they are the they 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 know crowd control. They know crowd control. So here, it's true. Yeah. So really, and here's here's the great thing. They are the strictly enforced by stormtroopers patrolling the land. So what they're doing is they're literally giving you a wristband, and that wristband is saying you are green, and that means you should be from eight to twelve. If it's one o'clock and you're still in the park, right. the stormtroopers are actually being stormtroopers and looking to um, get you out of the park. You know, so it it just goes on to say. <laughs> <laughs> You gotta leave now. Okay, I just want to know how many people are gonna stay past their time slot just to be escorted by stormtrooper. I would tell <laughs> Todd. Sign me up for that, you know. So <laughs> here, here, here's what it, it's 
if you didn't happen to get a reservation at Disneyland Resorts and get in the land early, you could still experience it starting June 23rd. There's a virtual queuing system in place you so you enjoy your time through Disneyland. Um, but really, the parking is just they are literally saying you got a there's a new parking structure. This is it's called Pixar Pals is still being constructed. Yep. But you can park at Mickey and Friends and Toy Story will be your primary parking lots to utilize when arriving to Disneyland. Because what they're saying is like if you're trying to get there just for that slot, you got to still kind of work in parking and all that. So you can park at Mickey and Friends and Toy Story will be your primary parking lots for Disneyland. So there you go. So basically, show up at Disneyland at like six o'clock in the right. morning. And then if you have to, just hang out at downtown right. Disney until That's you right. can go in. And don't be late. Because if you're late, stormtroopers are going to kick you out. I'm just saying. All right. What else, Heather, <laughs> at Galaxy's Edge? Okay. So blogmickey.com um, shared the release of full menus oh. at the dining locations of Galaxy's okay. Edge. So, okay. We, we talked about some of these. Right. I mean... Like some, of, yeah. some of the drinks we mentioned a couple of weeks ago, but this is like the full menu mm-hmm. and it's it's ridiculous. So um, we've got Docking Bay 7 Food and right. Cargo, um, which I believe we just mentioned was like a quick right. service kind right. of a thing. Um, let's see. There's smoked kadu ribs. Yeah. There's a yab shrimp noodle salad. Uh-huh. There's a Felician Felician Garden yeah. Spread, the Braised Shack Roast, Thorian Garden, the of Thorian course, Garden Loaf, the Thorian and, Garden Loaf. I mean, come and on. the fried oh my gosh. Dorian Tip Yep. But can we just say for a moment, there's a dessert called the Oi Oi Puff, <laughs> right? And the Batu Bun. <laughs> can I get an Oi Oi? <laughs> Oh, oh my god, it's out of control. Yeah. Um, they're gonna have special kids' meals, and then of course, all the specialty drinks without alcohol. Yeah, so you have like moof um, juice, pathro, pathro. Am I saying that right? Pat, pathro, patro, patro? batu bakua tea. I mean, come on, uh, it's it's like, come on, this is oh a good talk. Gosh. I mean, seriously. Um, and then of course, we've got Oga's Cantina. Okay. The place that Todd's going to hang out for all four yes, of his hours yes, at the park. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to say, <laughs> Stormtroopers, you're going to have to drag me out of here. Yeah. Basically. And so it looks like they've got some some morning uh, specialties, some afternoon and evening. Um, but we're talking we're talking liquor, people. Um, I want a bloody rancor. That is fantastic. Yeah? That's yeah, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get the fuzzy sure tauntaun? Uh, Jedi mind trick. <gasps> There's a yub nub. <laughs> yeah. But Be- Bespin fizz T16 sky hopper. I mean, Dagobah slug slinger. There you go. Yeah. Right now. Some of you might not be old That's enough true. to drink or you don't like right. alcohol. Do not okay. panic. Because we've got a Black Spire Brew. We've got a Moonga Tea. We've got Blue Bantha. Oh, man. Blue Milk. Oh, wow. Right? Yeah. We've got Jabba Juice. That's... A Blurg <laughs> Fire. Carbon Freeze. I mean, come uh, on. Oh, it's all so right, here's, good, people. Here's the beers really on tap. Here we go. Gold... Squadron Lager, White <laughs> Wampa Ale, Gamorian Ale, Bad Motivator IPA. I mean, come on. I don't even like beer. I, I said this before. I don't even like beer. I'll try them all. Just, I'll try them all just once. Why not? Um, they it's have a true. Spice Runner Hard Cider. I mean, come mm-hmm. on. And if you like your wine, so, Imperial Guard. Yep. A red, a red. Totally. Red. So there you go. 
Yeah. And I mean, it looks like they've also got, (laughs) oh, the Black Spire Outpost Market with Ronto Roasters as the Uh. centerpiece. And again, basically kind of looks like quick food, uh, like a Ronto wrap. and wants a Ronto wrap, you know? Nuna turkey jerky (laughs) and some other specialty Uh. beverages. Um, Katsaka's kettle menu. There's an outpost popcorn mix. Um, the MSE six series repair droid souvenir popcorn of vessels. Course. Shut up and take my money. Uh, and then, of course, specialty bottled course. beverages. Um, if you've not seen these yet, I mean, I don't. You're yeah. missing. They're like little, like Coca Cola and Sprites in like the shape a thermal of detonator, basically droids. Or yeah, but, well, yeah. that too. <laughs> so. Um, uh, you were, yeah, it, it sounds like just food people, but really it's an experience. Right. Well, Heather, we have more so. breaking news. Oh my gosh. Gra- Galaxy's Edge as this thing ramps up. All right. Mr. Bob Iger himself. This is, this is a tweet yep. on Sunday, May 12th. Best way to impress your friends, give them a personal tour of Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. Who's those personal friends? Steven Spielberg, J.J. Abrams, Kathleen Kennedy, and then the Imagineer creator, Scott Trowbridge. So you got the creator of Galaxy's Edge, Trowbridge here, with Bob Iger, with Steven Spielberg, J.J. Abrams, and Kathleen Kennedy. It's it's not even fair, man. So it's just there there's a picture of mm-hmm. them at the Falcon inside the the you know by the chess table outside, just yep. the four of them. I'm like, where's George? Hello? Did George not get an invite here? Um, but it's pretty cool seeing Spielberg, JJ, and Kathleen. So does that mean Spielberg? Is going to do a Star Wars flick? I don't know. You ask good know. questions. It's it's pretty amazing, though, that you get a personal tour by, by, the, by, by the Big Mouse himself. So there you go. Lots of Galaxy's Edge news. And then finally, Heather, what do we got? Woo. I know, oh so my much goodness. news. So nme.com. Sure. And one of their blog posts basically is sharing all the key release dates for Disney from 2019 to 2027. 2020, 20 what? 2019 to 2027. <laughs> okay. And? Oh, my gosh. I, I don't even know where to start, you guys. I mean, we've got... Aladdin, we've got Dark Phoenix, I've got Toy Story 4, yep. I've got the new Lion King, um, something called Ready or Not. Here I come, um, yeah. No. Ad Astra, the second Maleficent movie. Um, oh, Frozen 2, if you didn't get enough of the first right. one. Right. Oh, um, something called The Rise of Skywalker. Oh, what's that? It's probably not uh, very okay. good. That's all 20. Yeah. That was just 2019. That's just 2019. Okay. Um, and then I, I can, I clearly cannot go through to 2027, 20, yeah, but yeah, well, but just a couple kind of, yeah. I mean, you I could, could. Okay. I'm not going to, <laughs> but you know, we've got a, a Mulan. We've got an untitled Marvel. We got another Pixar movie coming at us, but more importantly, as this goes mm-hmm, on, mm-hmm. yes, I believe the rumors are we are getting three new Star Wars uh, movies. What? Outside of Rise of Skywalker. Right. So. So December 16th, 2022. Untitled yep. Star Wars movie. No big deal. No big deal. No big deal. Uh, so. December 2024, December yeah. 20th, 2024, Untitled Star Wars movie. And the last one is 2020, 26, December 18th, 
Star Wars movie. I may or may have not put these already on my Google calendar. I'm just saying. You're just no. weird. Just it's being no. prepared. You That's are right. prepared. That's yeah. right. And heaven forbid you book something that far right. in advance. And 202017, the last movie that Disney announced is December 17th, Avatar 5, people. Avatar 5. Yes. There's four Avatar movies. One of the things that Disney kind of announced was they're shifting Avatar a little bit. And, oh, yeah, they're throwing in an Indiana Jones movie in here just for giggles. And I think that comes out. They have that lined up in July of 2021. 20, yeah. Dude, it's it's crazy. So, really, the debate is, is this the Ryan Johnson trilogy? And now they are spacing them two years apart or are they mixing this up and doing a Ryan Johnson, then a star Wars story. And then what are they doing here? What are you, what's your thoughts here, Heather? Oh my gosh. I don't I know. know. I don't know what I'm doing tomorrow. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do in 2027. No. Um, it's interesting. I feel like the whole conversation about the Ryan Johnson trilogy has been like super yeah, duper quiet. Yeah. So it's hard to know if this is what okay. it is. Um, I mean, we got nothing in se- at celebration. I feel like about no. that trilogy. So, well, I, it'd be interesting to see if you, it's good thing you mentioned celebration because it's like maybe at Anaheim they will tease this and say, "Oh, you're smart." I try to be. Um, I think you know because Anaheim will be the 40th anniversary of Empire, so that's the big thing that they'll have. But. Now, mm-hmm. now that, you know, and at that time, Rise of Skywalker will be out, out, out. So the, the, now you're going to mm-hmm. set the future and maybe it's something that where they're like, oh, this is what's in store. But I'm I'm good with the two year gaps. I mean, we, you know, mm-hmm. us original trilogy had three years and no Internet to think about this stuff. So um, I think there's. Everything they have slated for TV as well as the movies, I don't think there's ever going to be a year where we're not going to have something Star Wars going on now, Mm -hmm. Um, which, again, Mm -hmm. we talked about before. could be a good thing and a bad thing, but I think that you space out the movies a little bit. It's going to make people hungry. And they they kept it in December, Mm -hmm. which I'm very happy about because I love my my new Star Wars December. So. (laughs) Whew. Well, fans, that was a lot of information. Oh my gosh. So that's a lot of news. <sighs> well, Todd, let's do some cantina chat. Let's. All right. So what's so, what's going on with you, Heather? What what have you been ooh. concocting this whole week? Well, I did indeed finish Queen yeah, Shadow. Thank you for that. Um, which is the the big Star Wars yeah. thing. Um, as of this recording, yesterday was Mother's Day, so happy belated Mother's yes. Day. So oh, to all your space bombs uh, out there, thank you. Right. So um, able to spend some time with the family, which was really right. great. Um. A lot of fun. I um, not really nerdy, but just um, where I'm at. I got this like major bug on Saturday okay. to like gut and clean my oh. house. Like not so like not sickness bug, but like that like yeah yeah yeah. Right. So I I mean I have been like moving furniture and cleaning things wow. and like. You know, that moment where you're, like, cleaning at your refrigerator. <laughs> just, like, let's just get rid of all the stuff. And yeah, whatever. right, yeah. So, I was... So, I kind of had this great, like, refresh thing going good, on good, yeah. um, recently, which yeah. is really good. Because I'm kind of really excited then about um, the future and stuff. And just, hmm. um, you know, I've got all of these... Um, Star Wars figurines and some collectibles from mm-hmm. Bruce. And so I feel like I'm finally making a space 
to Good. put them out yeah. and improperly yeah. display them. So yeah, so that's kind of what's going on. And then I totally got sucked into this TV show on Netflix. <laughs> Do tell. It's called Quantico. Okay. I know it's like super yeah. old and it's like no longer on the yeah. air, but <laughs> gosh, I'm such a sucker, man. <laughs> Netflix just has that camera inside your house. It's like, oh yeah, here you go. So, there. so some productivity, some family time, some prepping for future things yeah. for all the merchandise I'm going to buy mm. at Star Wars land. And <laughs> there you go. Got to clear the space. Got to clear space, you know. That's right. Oh, my gosh. So, well, that's anyway. great. That's great. Yeah. It's always good to be organized, you know. Sometimes you have to yeah, adult. You do. You do. Good. So, Todd. Uh, yes, again, happy belated Mother's Day to all those mothers out there. We, we can't do it without the moms. You know, it's kind of important. It's kind of important. And it's important true. in Star Wars. So, lots of space moms out there. Um, yes. Yeah, just uh, same thing, kind of family weekend. Just did a lot of stuff with the fam because of Mother's Day. And that was always fun. Um, yeah, not, not too much nerdy stuff going on this week. I am going through um, Battlefront Twilight Company. So it, this was, it's an older book, but it's one of the new canon books and it's um, tied to Battlefront, the video game. And so it's talking yeah. about um, a lot of different battles because it's in the title Battlefront, you know. Uh, but it's really cool following uh, Twilight Company and they are on different missions. And so it's intersecting. It's it's based mostly in the original trilogy, so there's some stuff a little bit for Empire and this really cool kind of scenes in Empire, and they so they're kind of back and forth, and um, at the part where you know basically the whole Empire's after um, Princess Leia and Han Solo, you know, and mm -hmm. now that gives this company since the empire is kind of focused on that they're strategically hitting these kind of supply trains for the empire and it's kind of cool kind of get a lot of interaction um and uh kind of fill out the space uh in star wars so it's been a fun little book so i'm do listening to that and so uh yeah that's, that's pretty much it nothing too nerdy this week kind of Kind of right. have to up my game, you know. After the May Fourth, it's kind of like a let, you know. You gotta. I was gonna it's say like, ah, Star Wars, and then it's like you know. Oh, I wasn't on. You know, we wasted all of our. Yeah, I know. Like last week. Oh yeah, you know, on Yahoo Entertainment, Troopin', You know, it was it was too much, and now it's like, well, what you do? I just read a book. I'm sorry, you know. So. Too funny. Too funny. Well, hopefully. We've still packed in quite a bit of Star Wars fun in oh this episode. Gosh, yes. So let me close this Let's out by saying the following. Thank you for listening to another episode of WSTR, Galactic Public Access. Please check us out on our social media, WSTR Media, all lowercase, all one word. You get to find out all the kooky things about us. Um... And of course, we want to hear from you. So comment on those things. You can tweet us in the Twitter. Um, you can email yeah. us your thoughts on Queen's Shadow and all of the amazing things that are happening at Galaxy's oh. Edge. By Right. Um, mailbox at WSTRmedia.com or call and leave us a voicemail at 630-557-WSTR, 630-557-9787. Um, and then, of course, check out our back catalog of episodes at podcast.wstrmedia.com. Wow. And wow. we got merch, people. So don't forget to check out store.wstrmedia.com. Uh, check out our new logo there on the mugs and the stickers and the T-shirts and the sweatshirts and the leggings and all yes. the things. Um, all right. Next week. We are doing episode one, one two, two, three, three. or 123, mm. however right. you want to say it. Um, and we are talking the 20 year anniversary of The Phantom Menace. Yeah. Who feels old? Yeah. Raise your hand I, if you I feel old. Say, no, no, I kid. I, I've aged. 
<laughs> oh uh, no. no, it's good. Yeah, I can't believe it's twenty years. Nineteen ninety nine that came out, man, and well, it's twenty nineteen. So there you go. That's it. <laughs> just happened. <laughs> so yeah, that should be fun, and hopefully we will have Aaron back. Yeah, we miss, miss you. Aaron. you. We didn't do any dad jokes. That is, that's why we need Aaron. Well, we need Aaron for many other things, but we do. <laughs> the dad jokes are here. Uh, we we need them back. We need the dad jokes back. So yeah, I totally. twenty year anniversary is right here. It's in May. It's happening. There it is. So we're gonna talk about it. episode one, two, three. Perfect. Well, Todd, if you're ready, I'm ready. I'm ready. So. Now, now, this this is, is podcasting. Podcasting. Go read Queen's Shadows. <sighs> you're brave, Your Highness. 